61-year-old woman with a teenage son. I have my own health issues. I don't own a house and I don't have any superannuation. I don't have investments, but I don't have credit cards or debt either. With rising costs of food I, and rent, I can see my future living in my only asset, which is a 1974 combi, and passing my youngest child onto his older siblings for the, to be their responsibility. For the past few months, my family and I have had terrible food insecurity just because the fridge broke and we were using ice for weeks. The, um, so we have been living on charity food for quite a few months. When my fortnightly disability support pension comes into my account, within about 12 hours, everything is spent on bills. They're really, I'll be lucky to have $10 left for a travel card for the week. Today again, Thursday, we went and got another load of food from a charity to support us for the week. I'm not sure I can actually see this cycle that my family is in ending anytime soon. So my question is, why does the government think one-off payments actually help me and others. When is the government going to talk about people like me and raise the rate of the disability support pension so I can live above the poverty line? Ronnie, how familiar is that sort of story? It's the story that I hear every single day. It's the demographic that we deal with. A one-off payment during the pandemic. We saw what happened with JobKeeper. During the time that JobKeeper was paid, people could afford or were managing their budgets a little bit better. After March, when those JobKeeper stopped, we had more people coming to us, more demand, and the exact situation reverted. I was going to share a story about a nurse, a single mother, who literally had to make a choice about she wanted to go to work. To go to work, she has to put her child into childcare. In order to put her child into childcare, she then had to make a choice. She couldn't drive her car to work because she couldn't pay for fuel, or she had to buy food. We also have to draw in the issue of not just wages but job insecurity when we talk about cost of living pressures and people facing homelessness. And I say this because during our floods a few weeks ago, uh, we ran a barbecue um, for people who'd been displaced by the flooding, and a young man told me that he lived in his car. Yep. Uh, during the floods, the rain bomb that we had, he had nowhere safe to even park it. His car was... The windows didn't work, he got soaked. He had a job and he couldn't get enough shifts. 64% of people who come to us for support have got jobs.